Hello guys, in the previous video we set up a serial wire viewer so we can easily use printf function. Next we have to work with the I2C protocol to communicate with the IMU sensor. First we have to open IOC file to configure I2C peripheral. So in this uh, specific uh, board, we have PB8 and PB9. We have to configure these two pins as um, serial clock and serial data lines. If you have um, other uh, microcontroller boards, in that case, you just need to check the data sheet to find the appropriate pins. Next, as you might notice, we have yellow corner, color, meaning that we haven't uh, fully configured I2C protocol. So we need to go to connectivity, I2C1. And among these options, we have to choose I2C. Then we will have a new window uh, that shows different parameters. Uh, right now, we don't need to touch any parameters because the default values are are enough for us. It's worth mentioning that in, in I2C protocol we have different speed modes. So we have a standard mode, fast mode and fast mode plus. But a standard mode is more than enough for us so I will keep it as it is. Next we will save our um, our uh, configuration by pressing Control S. Remember my decision? Yes. So the generation of the code is over, so we can start coding uh, I2C protocol. Next, I ask you to open the following folder, drivers, how driver, include. Then inside of this, we have this uh, file that comprises all functions, all markers, everything related to I2C um, protocol. So if you scroll down and on these lines, you will find the decoration of different functions. Um, in order to proceed further, I want to clarify one thing. In general, in, in the HAL API, we have um, three uh, working modes. We have polling modes, we have interrupt modes and DMA. Uh, when using polling mode, we manually trigger I2C uh, protocol using these functions. But when using these functions, uh, CPU will be busy handling these functions, so we can do nothing but just to wait the end of the end of the, end of the execution. Of these functions. That's why we have blocking mode. But we can also use interrupt mode when we trigger I2C, but we don't need to wait. After using this function, we can we can immediately switch to other uh, actions. Uh, for instance, if we use this function, uh, we we ask I2C protocol to transmit some data, then we can uh, do other things, but when the transmission is over and after the end of the transmission, there will be some interrupt service routine function that will be invoked. So that's why we have non-blocking mode. And finally, we have also DMA mode, which is using direct memory access, but right now we don't need to bother about it because I will explain that later. So uh, first, we will work with these functions. At the beginning, we will use this function just to check that we connected our sensor properly to the microcontroller, that we powered everything properly. So let's uh, copy all of that. We need to paste it within the main function after um, all these uh, initialization functions. So next we have to provide all the arguments. 
So first we go to this function. So we need this variable. So we'll paste it here. Next we need the address of the i squared c device. Just open the data sheet of, of the device that you're using. In my case, I have the following MU sensor, and I just uh, uh, search for address. So we have the following address, as you see. Also, in this sensor, we have the following pin. So by setting and resetting this pin, we can change the address. To be specific, the last bit of this address value. But in my board, the state of this pin is low, so I have the following address. So I just copy it and I will paste it here. Also, as we discussed, we have uh, address of the device. After that, uh, I2, I square C master, the microcontroller has to send the, the read write bit. But when using this function, uh, we have to in encapsulate these two data pieces as a just a one byte. So in my case, I will just add zero at the end. Or we can do like a left shift operator by one bit, then we have let's say plus zero. And this has to be zero B, meaning that this is the binary number. Then we have to specify trials. I will just uh, try to connect once to the I square C device, then time as a timeout, I will set. 100 milliseconds. And as you might notice, this function returns the following, uh, the, the following data type. So I will just uh, create um, just a temporary variable to check the returned value. So I will check if So right now I ask you to connect your I2C device to your microcontroller. Uh, don't forget to power your device. Next we just need to connect the microcontroller and we press the back. Um, okay, that's wrong. Here we need to provide the address of the variable, so we will need to put ampersand symbol so open ITM data console then we can just resume and as you see we have uh, the following message meaning that uh, we connected um, the I square C device properly to our microcontroller but if you get uh, this message, just check cables, just make sure that you powered on the i c device properly, that you didn't um, mess up with SDA and this, uh, with uh, serial data and the serial clock lines. Let's continue. First, I just want to eliminate all these warnings. So for that, we just need to put brackets. These yellow warnings are gone. Next, we need to open that file again. So we have to work with other functions to to write and read I square C device. If you have just a simple I square C device, you just need to write and read. But in most of the cases, we have to deal with the internal memory of the sensor. Uh, we or in other words, we have to work with the registers. In that case, we need to work with the following functions, memory write and memory read. These functions are used to transmit and receive, receive some data in, a, when in a master as well as in slave mode. But in our case, we will work with the following functions to read specific register to write 
to the specific register within within the sensor so let's copy that so we are writing so read to write bit has to be zero and we have the following address next we need to specify the register that we want to write for that purpose we have to work with the data sheet of the uh, sensor so in my case we I will work with the following uh, document before reading uh, the sensor measurements we first need to configure the sensor so let's open this uh, register so this uh, register has uh, first of all the following bits that allow us to configure the bandwidth of accelerometer and the gyroscope but I will keep it as it is as a default value next we have to work with the following register to configure the range of the gyroscope full scale range so by default all the values is zero so I want to set the following full scale range meaning I have to set one uh, to these bits so these bits are located in this position bit 4 and 3 so I have to set this bit to 1 and we have the following register so we have 27 as a memory address size in my case I have just a one byte so I keep it as just a one and we need to provide the address of the buffer So as, I, as we discussed, we have to set this bit to configure the full scale range to this value. So we have the following value. And of course we have to insert ampersand symbol and we just want to send just a one single data one single byte so i'll keep it as just a one as a and as a timeout i will set 100 milliseconds so um, let's do the same trick debug and we have another error okay we need to remove this so as you see we got the following message meaning that we successfully wrote the following data to this register of the IMU sensor.